All right, we're recording now, okay? Um, all right, Evan, so, so the last point that Chris made there is um, really the most important one, that the idea behind this thing is to try to make life a little bit easier for our customers um, in a competitive environment when they're talking to you and another uh, potential vendor or two. Um, there's an awful lot of communication going back and forth, and uh, it's easy for yours to get lost in the fray um, and for email threads to be confused and so on and so forth. And uh, this tool will help clean things up, simplify things, um, and you know, do what we just said in terms of making life easier for the customers. After this training, everyone, I'll be available for you. I'm, I'm available for you. You'll have my contact information. We can set up a one-on-one -on -one session if you'd like for whatever questions you might have. Um, any coaching that you need, any ideas on best practices and so on and so forth. So this isn't the end of my engagement um, with you, obviously. Um, and, uh, you know, as we go through this, you know, just keep in mind, if, if you'd like to follow up one-on-one, -on -one, we certainly can. The room you're looking at right now is actually in my environment, uh, in, in the Journey Sales Org. Uh, Smart Rooms is natively built in Salesforce.com. So we're not integrated with, we're actually a native build. So by definition, any events occurring in smart rooms are also by, by definition occurring in Salesforce. Um, so that's where the data lives. It's where the system lives. And you will access smart rooms um, through your Salesforce instance. So right now I'm on your dashboard. I'm gonna go back actually to your Salesforce instance. Um, and show you what this should look like. Um, I had sent out a note a little while ago. Uh, hopefully you saw it. Um, but what we want to do is make sure that Smart Rooms is actually a button on your Salesforce homepage. Uh, to, to make that happen, if you haven't already, you'll just click this plus button over here on the right. And when we click that, you could select it down here. But what I'd actually suggest you do is click Customize My Tabs. This button, this orange button here in the, to the right of the screen. If you click Customize My Tabs, over here in the Available Tabs section, you'll just scroll down to, uh, to Smart Rooms, and it will be the first one. So I already have on my dashboard, Smart Rooms is obviously already there, so it, it is over on this side already. Um, but this Smart Rooms button uh, or link here, will be in your available tabs. Just move it over um, to the selected tabs box and then save, and you will then have Smart Rooms set up as a link um, right at the top of your Salesforce, and that's how you'll access it. So I'm gonna click that button now and actually get back into our dashboard. In the dashboard, there are two different views. Um, Chris, I, I recommend this view for the sales team who are managing a smaller number of rooms, um, you know, be it two, four, six, eight, whatever that is. Um, it's a manageable number of rooms to be able to view through this um, dashboard experience. And the, this dashboard experience is actually actionable. Um, so you can add content right from here. You can post a discussion comment. We'll get all into all of this in more detail in just a minute, but um, you can actually take action from this grid, if you will, dashboard view. Another view, you can flip back and forth, Chris. When you're looking at many smart rooms, I think this view um, is easier, um, more information at a glance. Um, and this view is constructed such that you have the smart room name on the left, the owner, the type of room, um, the account it is a, a associated with, when it was created, our activity on, on the DY side, and then the customer activity. Finally, how many people are involved or in, invited into the smart room. Um, so this dashboard is where you'll begin. Um, you click the button in Salesforce, you get to your dashboard, and then manage your smart rooms. The smart room that I, in your environment, that I messaged a bunch of you from earlier um, is right here. Um, so this is both, this is a, this, the view that you're seeing right now is exactly the way your smart rooms will look based on a template created by Yaniv. Um, it looks 
good. Um, there's a ton of content in here. We will talk about that a little bit later because um, I think you'll need to, to manage the volume of content that you're actually making visible to your customers at the outset um, so that you don't overwhelm them. Um, but we can, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that more in a few minutes. But this is actually a live smart room in your environment. Um, you can see um, here on the left, you know, just from a navigation perspective, um, the header image up top, I'm going to show you how to customize that to get the customer name in there. Um, we've got our team on the left, and I'm actually going to flip over to the smart room that's in my environment to show you the difference here. So if this is how it will look for you guys when you're using this with the customer. Um, the dynamic yield team will be down here where the journey sales team is in this environment, and your customer team will be up top. Um, another thing you, you, you'll notice that's different in um, this smart room versus the one that we're looking at in your environment is, um, I've loaded your pictures into this one. Um, it, uh, it, 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 with our next version, which was actually gonna be pushed into your production instance this evening, um, it will be very easy for you to load your customer pictures in. Um, and just really personalize the, the site to, to that degree. Um, in addition, for what it's worth as well, um, as we look at this smart room back in your environment, you'll notice that none of you have your pictures in here. Um, that's because you do not yet have your pictures loaded into um, your page, uh, or your account in your Salesforce instance. So I would suggest you do that um, so that when your customers communicate with you, um, it through the site. So I could send Cameron a message very simply, um, you know, just, just click his name in the left. This um, screen slides out to the right. Uh, and, you know, um, so hello, Cameron, I'm going to send that to you. When you get that, if you would, just reply back and I'll show everybody what it looks like as the replies occur. Um, but you can see right up here, when I click that, Cameron's picture is up at the top. When you load your customer's pictures in, they'll be there. Most importantly, with your picture loaded into Salesforce, when they click your name, your picture will be there. Um, again, just differentiating the kind of experience they're having communicating with you through this uh, tool versus standard email um, and, and a higher degree of personalization. Hey, quick, quick question before you go on, on those messages, are we receiving some sort of notification that it's taking place, that questions are being asked? Indeed you are. So over, when I come over to my, um, this is my email screen here. Um, so you can see um, Cameron sent me a private message in the, he just, he just replied back. So this is what it looks like. And you know, even more than that, you can see this morning, I, I was getting notifications that Michael visited the, the room, Jessica visited the room, Jessica visited again, um, Cameron visited the room for the first time, Brian. Then Karen, Cameron sent me this message um, right here as reply. So I said, hello, he got it, replied back. Um, if I wanna reply in smart rooms, I can just click that button in the notification and it's actually going to take me, it's going to open up a new window and take me into, into that smart room again. Um, so the answer to your question is yes, you'll get notifications and that's what they look like there. Got it. Um, and one more quick question. Uh, sorry. Uh, is this supported for, for apps like on a phone or when traveling, et cetera? So given that we are, native in Salesforce, um, we, we use the Salesforce One app. Um, so if you don't have that, you can download that. And yet for your customers and from a notifications perspective, um, you're, you're, th this notification you're looking at on my screen is actually built to show up in your, in your smartphone um, and along with some other reporting you'll get on a daily and weekly basis from us um, to fit on your smart room. But in terms of responding in smart rooms and actually interacting, um, you know, beyond just looking at notifications to, to actually interact with smart rooms from your phone, you'll need to download the Salesforce One app. We can, I can help you with that again in a follow-up session. And, and you can also just reply to this email, correct? Pardon? You can also just reply to this email as well, right? Yeah. Yep. And now listen, if, you, if a customer, so that you can respond in smart rooms, as I did, 
or click here to reply via email, uh, which will just send it to the to the individual, right? Now, if you reply via email, the record, the the thread that we were looking at there, um, when I come back over here, the thread. The thread won't exist if you reply via email. So the respondent smart rooms um, will will maintain the sanctity of this thread, which ultimately winds up being one of the big benefits for you all. Um, I mean, again, when you think of just always go back to the idea that this isn't necessarily meant to make your life easier directly. Um, it, it's that's stated perhaps violently, um, but it's the real intent here is to make your customer's life easier. Um, and one of the places where customers, you know, and all the evidence out there is very clear that customers are demanding a better, simpler, easier experience from, from B2B sales reps. Um, one of the places that gets that's frustrating for customers is the volume of email they're receiving from us and sales reps in the competitive situation. Um, and the, the number of email threads which are begun, lost, confused, attachments that are shared, they're forgotten where they're stored. Those kinds of frustrations are what you're going to alleviate by using smart rooms with them. So I say all that to say um, what I just did, the, the actual experience you saw me go through with Cameron, um, is what I would suggest you very casually do with your customers as you get them involved in this. When you're actually, you know, the best way to introduce a customer to a smart room is while you're speaking with them on the telephone or even in a live event. Um, present from smart rooms and actually invite them in while they're there, while they're on the phone, while you're in the event, and show them what the experience looks like and explain to them to reply back to me through smart rooms, just click here. And that way, everything that we're talking about is going to be here and it's not going to get lost as we, as we continue. Um, so you'll work your own language out, but important to note that, you know, this, this is a new experience for the customers. So it's a very, very simple, lightweight kind of training you have to conduct. It's a few sentences. And yet explaining to them what it is and why it's there and, and why you're making this available to them um, to make things easier in their job um, is important. So back to the, I'm going to come back here over to your environment again. Um, and I want to, now that we've looked at how to access smart rooms and we've looked at the dashboard, I just want to show you how to create a new smart room. Um, from the template that Yaniv has created. So I'm actually going to, I'll leave this one up, come back to the dashboard and show you that right here in the upper right hand corner uh, of your dashboard, um, there's a button that says create a new smart room. So I'm going to click that. The first thing you're going to do is select your type. And when you log in tomorrow, this experience is going to be a little different for you than it is you're looking at right now because of the upgrade in, to a new release, which will be executed this evening. And yet, when you log in and look at that new experience, it's only going to be easier and, and simpler and more intuitive than what we're doing right now. Not that this is all that bad, but um, it'll be it'll be you know consistent conceptually with this, but the appearance will be a little different. Regardless, you're going to select general room for the moment and then click next. You know, here we'll just call this, you know, test two. When you then, you, you will then be able to associate the smart room you're creating with your account. Okay, so in this case, I'm just gonna select and attach it to the journey sales test account. That's step two. And then next, you're gonna select your template. In our, this is easy for us right now because you will always be selecting um, this template, the DUI room template e-commerce app. That's, that is the one that Yaniv has completed and, and spent a bunch of time on and um, the one that I showed you before. So this is the one you will be selecting for the time being. Ultimately, there will most likely be more added, um, but this is where we start. So we select that. And so here we are, we've pulled, we've, we're in the, in the process of creating the smart room from that template. Now, this is still a template that I'm looking at here. So what I wanna do is once I click save down here and we called this test two, the, the name of the smart room is test two. Once I click save, 
then the template that we just launched from is actually saved as a new smart room. Okay, when you do that, this smart room will then be the first one at the top of the screen highlighted in green. Um, you can just then click into it. And here we are, it's the same basic thing that we were looking at a few moments ago, um, except you're not all in there. So given that you're not in here, I'm actually going to switch over to the one I had already created. Um, and incidentally, everything that I'm speaking about um, here, you will be able, you all have been invited into this training room. You will be able to come into the training room and in the sales section, there's a sales training step-by-step -step guide. And everything that I'm speaking about um, is, is right in this document to include you know, step-by-step -step images here on how you can execute everything that we're talking about. Uh, so I'll be available for one-on-ones, but this is there for you as well. Go back over to our room. Okay, so we've launched a new smart room um, and we now have to customize the smart room for our, our customer. Right up here, from a navigation perspective, again, you've got the header image, You've got people over here. I showed you how the differences between your team and the customer team, discussion groups down at the bottom, and then our content, the core of the smart room being all of the content. Um, so, and there's a, again, a ton of that, and we'll look at that again in a couple of minutes. But for the moment, I want to customize this for my given customer. In addition to everything over on the left, you've got a few navigation buttons in the upper right. I'm going to put this smart room into edit mode, at which point I can logically edit what I want. Um, now, Yaniv has named the, these smart rooms um, Dynamic Yield 4 with the intent being you would click the edit button and come in and, you know, let's just, okay. Once we type in the name of the customer company, click save over here on the right, and we're done. You don't need to, I, in fact, I think this, this um, tagline has been you know, engineered such that you do not have to and perhaps shouldn't change it. Um, all you have to do is put the customer's company in there. And this room, um, for all intents and purposes here at the outset, has been customized for that customer. Um, when you're done, you're editing, important to come back up here into the upper right and click finish, and it will take the room out of edit mode and get, a, get rid of all those buttons. So we've customized the room for our customer, and at this point, the room theoretically is ready to invite people into. Um, now, this is the point where I wanted to talk about the volume of content here. I think as a team, it will be important for you all to spend some time in this smart room, get a sense of what content is available, and decide how much of this content are we going to actually open for our customers, leave open for our customers at the outset. Because there is a ton here, um, and it could potentially be a little overwhelming for the customers. Now, if, the, if, the, if strategically there is a reason for all of this to be visible, um, then by all means, that's, that's for you to judge. As I looked at it, I see a ton of valuable content here. My concern, again, would just be making sure that the customers, you're putting the customers in a position of being able to think about what you want them thinking about and making sure that what you want them thinking about is it, it stands out. Um, and is naturally one of the few things um, that they will, you know, let the, that, that they will actually open in here and that more is then opened over time. So as you're thinking about that and looking at it, um, the way you'll hide content in here, and then we can do this in the template, Chris, at the outset, um, once, a, once a, you, know, you make a, a strategic decision on how much do you want open at the outset or, or invisible. But within any room at any given time, the sales reps can click um, this little pencil button on a piece of content, click edit, and we're going to get to the, um, we want to get to the, I want to get to the um, 
privacy. So we can set here who can view this piece of content um, and make it, you know, we can, can view all or none right here. So we're choosing to hide a piece of content, make it invisible to everyone or hide it from everyone. Um, and likewise, when you add a piece of content, this um, experience will come up again and you will have the choice of notifying everyone in the room that a new piece of content has been added or not. Um, but this is where you can select privacy rights um, to a select few, to everyone or to no one in the room. Um, and, and you know, I, I raise this again just from the perspective of you, know, you, you guys deciding how much of what is here you want open at the outset. And that's a, you know, I think that's a, a discussion that Yaniv and Mukund um, would rightly weigh in on as well, um, but probably a big one for you to have. Now, once you've got the room constructed such that it's, it is ready for your customers, um, important to keep in mind what I mentioned a few minutes ago. The best way to, um, the best way to introduce this to your customers um, is live. And there's actually in the training smart room that I showed you, um, it, there's this sheet. And it's there, you know, take it for what it's worth, think about it, um, and, and decide on what your personal strategy is going to be. But when you introduce this to the, to the, to the customers, I wouldn't be bashful about, you know, making somewhat of a, a big deal, probably too strong a term, but introducing it to them such that they understand that this is something that you have done for them. This is a site that you have built for them um, to make their life easier. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a personalized microsite specifically for you to um, communicate through, um, collaborate through, share content through, um, as they're considering dynamic yield for their organization. Um, th this is a very different experience than what any of your competitors are presenting to their customers. Your competitors are just sending, sending emails, leaving voicemails, and doing everything the way we've always done it in B2B sales. This is going to move the cheese a little bit. So it's very valuable. They'll like it. They'll have a positive reaction to it once they're in it and using it. Um, but getting them there takes a little bit of um, it takes a little bit of education you to them um, on your part. So this document is here for you to review. Consider you know how to train them, um, and in in speaking with your key um, contact, also important to consider as they invite other people into the room, which in incidentally is one of the great um, great gains to be had through the use of this tool. Um, it is, you know, if there is one single greatest gain that I see coming from smart rooms, it's enabling us to extend our reach into the client organization and become visible to and give us access to people on the customer side that heretofore, you know, we've not only not ever communicated with, but in many cases we're unaware of fundamentally. So there's people out there weighing in on the decision as to whether or not to move forward with dynamic yield. And we don't know their names, we don't know their faces, and we don't have access. Smart Rooms helps that. I mean, we've seen Smart Rooms and clients grow to 80 or 90 people on the client side. Now, not all deals require 80 or 90 people to be involved. But, you know, what back 25 years ago when I was being trained in sales, I was trained to think of three buyers out there, my financial buyer, my technical buyer, my business buyer. And there were usually two or three people that I would get to know in the process. Well, that three people is now up to an average of seven customer buyers in the typical B2B sale, um, most of whom uh, are typically unknown to the sales rep. One of the benefits here, again, of smart rooms is to allow you to extend your reach into their organization, then making you capable, giving you the ability to educate them directly, even if you don't communicate with them directly, um, in a one-on-one -on -one message, you're communicating with them through the ability to share this content with them directly and not rely on your key contacts to forward the attachments that you've sent to them. So when you invite your key contact or your key contacts into the smart room, as you explain to them what this is, show them how they can invite other people into the smart room. Even ask them, do you have a couple of people on your team you'd like to be able to review this content? Well, sure I do. Okay, let's invite them. 
and then right there, right with them, click the invite button and invite them into the smart room and show your customers how to do that for you and then let them know, invite anyone you want in. Anyone you want to look at this content, feel free to invite them in here. And it's giving you the opportunity to educate a broader audience in the prospect company, um, you know, then indirectly or, or as, a, as, a, as an outcome of that, um, speeding the education process and compressing your deal cycles. So helping, you know, not just training customers in terms of what does this look like and, and you know, kind of why am I doing it for you, but getting them participating in smart rooms um, from the perspective of helping you add more people is a key step in the process. Yeah, and I think the other thing that's really nice that you know may may have been intuitive and everybody's doing, but obviously the, the metrics and tracking behind who, who's viewing content, when, getting those notifications, uh, I think those are all really valuable insights too. In that training room that I made available to you and, and you know, me messaged Cameron through, um, there is also um, this best practices sheet. And you know, right down here at the bottom, we're talking about introducing the smart rooms personally. Um, can't stress that enough. If you invite people to this blind, they probably won't come in. They'll see the invitation. They won't know what it is. They've never seen it before. Like many of us, they've been trained by their IT departments not to click on something that they don't know what it is. Um, so you will see a, I mean, you'll see some engagement if you do it that way. Um, it won't be, you know, zero, um, but it certainly won't be the 100% that you want and that you will get if you introduce it personally. Um, showing them how to invite others. Um, you know, another thing, and this is logical for us as sales reps, we're trained to think of and then ask the right questions along the way, right? Um, but making sure you're executing on that concept in the smart room. Um, you know, if, when, you're, when you're looking at a piece of content, you know, you can send the, the customer a one-on-one -on -one message. You know, I, you know, send Chris a message, you know, Chris, you know, or, 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 or send Cameron another message, you know, did you have a chance to view page three of the, you know, and the reality is I'm sending Cameron a message here asking, did you have a chance to review page three of the document that we discussed? So I send him that, right? Just to remind him. Now, here's another game to be had from this for you guys. Um, and that's the analytics that come out of this. So right up here in the upper right of the smart room, you'll see this analytics tab. When I click on that analytics tab, right there in the upper right, I get my view of everything that's going on in the smart room. So I can see right in here how many times any one person has been in the room and then what they've done. Um, so, you know, we can look down here and you know, come in and see, you know, Simon has been in the room, let's see, joined on August 22nd, you know, and we can see Simon's whole journey through the smart room here, as well as what pieces of content Simon has actually looked at. Um, so for you, um, you're going you're gonna to know whether or not the customers have actually come in here um, and, look, and looked at the content. So it'll, it, you get the notifications we talked about earlier. You've got access to these analytics. Um, to get rid of that view, you just click this little X there, um, and you can see everyone else. So it's going to give you the insight you need to be able to reach out to people at the right time on the right issue to help move them through the process. Um, you know, how many times have we sent attachments to a prospect? and you know set up a meeting in two or three days or a week to talk about what was included in the attachment um, and we get on the meeting or we get a note right before the meeting and find out they didn't have time to look at it they hadn't made time to look at it they haven't looked at it and so there's no sense to have this meeting well if you can know that a day or two in advance of, of the meeting that's scheduled that they haven't looked at it yet and shoot them a reminder. Looking forward to speaking with you. Um, and, you know, again, here's here's the uh, here's the piece of content we're going to be talking about. You're 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 putting yourself at less risk of your deal stalling based on customer inactivity. Not because you know they're they're they don't like you and they don't want to do it. They're just busy. So here again, trying to make their life a little bit easier by helping them through the process. Um, wherever you are in smart rooms, you can always click home. 
in the upper left and it will take you back to your home page. Um, and you know, everyone, so we, we've, we've looked at how to access smart rooms, showed you the dashboard, launched a new smart room, um, talked about introducing the smart rooms to your customers and getting them to invite contacts. Um, the last thing I wanted to cover with you here today, just as this, you know, introductory session is how to add content. So, there's a, a couple different ways and you know in the smart room that we've looked at and I'm going to go back into your environment here you can see that Yaniv has intentionally included a couple of sections in the smart room um, which do not have content so technical documents and then there's another section down here there's proposal for proposals right so there's a, a blank section for proposed proposals so there will be cases where you are going to add, put content in here on an ad hoc basis. So coming back over into this smart room, I'm going to put the room into edit mode up here in the upper right. And then I'm just gonna come down into the sales section. There's a couple of things that we can do here. So I'm gonna click add content number one in the right of this section. Now, when you are adding content, and this is where Yaniv and the marketing team come in, and I think Mukund has identified this as, as a, probably something which will emerge as an opportunity, an ongoing opportunity for the marketing team to continually enhance support for you and make sure that the right content or necessary content is being created for you. But when content is being loaded into multiple smart rooms, so there's a piece of content that you're gonna use in every smart room and every sales rep is going to use in every smart room um, that they launch, you want that piece of content to be in the library. And so smart rooms has its own um, content management system. Um, and the, the day the content flows such that, so you, you've got the content in the smart rooms library and then we'll pull the content, we'll, you know, in, in the template, we're gonna pull content into the template from the library and then we use those templates to launch the smart rooms. And if by following that flow, should there ever be a need to update any of these pieces of content, Yaniv and his team can go in, update the core content and the root content in the library, and it will flow through into any templates that where that content resides and then in, into all of your smart rooms um, where you may have that piece of content as well. So loading content from the library um, it's just, it's very simple. I'm going to, you know, come in here and um, I'm going to load a, a, a case study. So it's, this is a, a piece of content that we have in our library. It's been formatted with a picture of the CompuWare building there. Um, so I'm just going to add the content. And it appears just like that image was in, in my, in my smart room. All right. So that's pulling it from the library. Now, as much time as we spent talking about that, there's also going to be a case where you need to add content on an ad hoc basis, um, deal specific. It's only going to be in one smart room. It's only going to be in this smart room. Um, so I'm going to pull it from my computer. So there I'm going to click upload a new file here in the upper left. I'm going to choose from my computer and I'll load in the, an ROI document. So this is an Excel document. Now, I'm pulling this from my computer, so it's, you know, there's no image attached to it. Um, so I'm going to, you know, click next here. And this is, you know, the, the, so far, so there we go. It, 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 actually, I must have floated over this. So um, my system pulled an actual image of the spreadsheet into the, um, in, into the, in, into the preview here. So then next. Uh, you know, it actually, I'm going to, up here in the upper right, you see advanced options. I'm actually going to change this and I'm going to make it a medium sized card. Um, small cards are four across in the smart room. Medium sized cards are two across and large size cards are take up the entire width of, uh, of the screen. So now I'm going to add that piece of content. 
All right, so we have, we've loaded our Excel sheet into the, into the room. Um, we've got an image of it here, um, and you click on that, and your customers can then download. So this is a preview, but very easy for them to download um, any document that you're sending them along these lines. And, you know, I did the Excel sheet there for a reason. You might be sending them Excel sheets you know, from time to time. Whatever it is, though, that's how you would add content in from your, from your computer. Um, again, when you're done, go up to the top, click Finish. And away you go, and the content is now available for viewing by your customers. So that is really, you know, we, we, could, we could talk more. We could talk specific use cases. We could get into more conceptual discussion. I'm happy to do that as a follow-up to this. But from the standpoint of an introduction, I think we've covered everything, Chris, at this point we wanted to cover. Um, do you have anything you wanted to add, or is there any clarification needed? Uh I, I did have a uh, quick question. Uh, apologies here again. Uh, how do I get access to this dynamic yield training account? Uh, the invitation that I got was for the uh, journey sales test account that you need put together. Okay. Who? Who? Uh, forgive me. Who is this? This is uh, this is Tim Bag. Okay, Tim. I'm going to add you in right now. Let's see, are you in my, I don't have you. All right, so it's a great question. It gives us an opportunity to do this. So um, I don't have you in my, my account for Dynamic Yield 10. So I'm gonna come up here into the upper right and click add a new contact. Two Gs? Yep. Yes. Okay, and Tim, what's your email address? Tim at dynamicyield.com. All right, we've added you in. And you will see that when I added you in, this message came up down here at the bottom. So I'm gonna click send email. And then you'll see what this looks like when you get it, right? So, hi, Tim. Send the invitation. And now, Tim, you're already in the smart room right there. Um, now, I'm going to just take the opportunity here to come over into, and I'm actually going to complete this here. Um, I'm back into my smart room. I'm going to click your name right up here. Click this little pencil. I'm going to upload a file. So we've added you to the smart room and your picture has been added. Um, so when I want to communicate with you, um, you're there, you're, you know, and, and you think about this for all your customers that you add in, you know, when they see all their pictures in there, there, it is probably not uncommon for some of your people that you are speaking with to have actually never met face to face some of the others. Um, so you're actually giving them a different kind of experience there just by adding their pictures in. Um, but when I go to click on you in the future, your name is there. If you want to communicate with me, um, then my picture will be there. Um, and we did all that in just a couple of minutes there at the end of the session. Um, so anyway, Tim, there you go. You've got it. And thank you for the question. Thank, thank you. All right, Chris, anything? 
I mean, I think, uh, I guess real quick, I'd like to open it up to the team to see if there are any, any, uh, any other questions. Um, Could you add a, um, a prospects logo up there? Yes. Yes. When you click edit, you can then change the logo out up here. Now I would, I would defer there to, um, which in fact, keep in mind, this is a smart room. The smart room you're looking at is in my environment. So we, this is not in yours. This, I added your logo in here. So, um, I would defer to Yaniv, um, for, for assistance on that because picking the right logo, uh, making sure it's a PNG file, having it laid out correctly. Um, that's something that, and not everyone knows how to do or is adept in. Um, and I think Yaniv and his team might have a resource to help. Um, but I would defer to him on that. Okay, so Brian, we can do this. Obviously, <clears throat> we, we, we're going to be, figure out some kind of a process. So we're obviously speaking to Capital One. I think you should just ping uh, Yaniv and he'll get uh, either Erica or uh, Peter give you the PNG. Yeah. Yeah, but if it's a small brand, you probably don't start there, but if it starts getting hot, then we'll have to devise a process by which you can get PNGs. And every time you create one, you just put in a request, and then you get a PNG data to get work. Yeah, I mean, basically everything of this is customizable. So not only the logo on the upper left-hand side, but we can also completely, you know, customize that entire header image into the, uh, the customer branding as well. Obviously, I don't need a higher level of touch from marketing and design, but we can make this really, really personalized. Yeah, I mean, once you, once you, um, you know, you, you have a, a library set up, um, you know, we can, I, I have, you know, pictures in here in our library um, and just to, you know, and, and there's a, there's a base library that you have as well. Um, but let's see when these come up here. So, you know, if we wanted to so finish, finish. So we've just changed the, um, There we go. We've just changed the header image up there. So there's different there's different pictures that you guys can add in and and, and customize um, your 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 smart rooms. Um, we certainly you know if I if I uh, come over and and go back to my dashboard, um, you know, there's um, you know for let's see. So if I want to look at a you know, a, a different client, um, how we've set it up. Um, you know, this is, this is different and, um, go back to my dashboard and, um, you know, what, 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 let's just see here, you know, PWC. Um, you know, so I say, I think this is a, this one, this, this smart room kind of turned out nice. So there's all kinds of different things you can do to brand it to the customer. Um, but certainly, um, certainly you don't have to, um, that there, there's nothing saying that you, that you have to do that. Um, I think that from the standpoint of getting started and keeping things simple at the outset, um, this is the exact right way to start. Um, and then feel your way through as you go. I, you know, I think that was McClund a few minutes ago said we can do some of these things, um, over time. Um, yet here at the outset, you know, this, this, I think this room looks really slick. Um, the way it is, the one addition I would make again, right at the outset, there's two actually one, I would get all of your pictures loaded in the Salesforce so that at least your pictures are showing up. And when your customers click your name, your picture is showing up for them when they communicate with you. That's one. And the second is really strategically as a team decide, um, how much of this content that's loaded here, do you want to have visible to the customers at the outset? knowing that as time passes and you notice that a customer has looked at a piece of content, that the impetus is then on you to open the next piece of content or another piece of content 
to keep them engaged or a few more pieces of content to keep them engaged. So I think that's just, again, that's just a strategic decision that your team needs to, um, you know, you weigh in on and, and have some discussion around. Chris McCond, anything else? I mean, I think just before we jump, I think what I'd like to do is for us just to set a goal of, uh, uh, you know, getting these up and running. So, uh, you know, I think what I'd like to see from the team is to get three of these up and running by, by next Friday. So obviously we want to make sure that it's at the right stage of the deal. Uh, and, and Glenn, maybe if you can provide some of your thoughts there, you know, certainly deals that we're, you know, at contracting stage with right now or in legal, right. doesn't make sense to open up a brand new smart room, but I think it's a, uh, a good opportunity to uh, certainly for brand new customers, but I think even customers that were, were at an earlier stage with, um, you know, like to get some of these set up so we can start to work through the mechanics of getting these set up, see what's working, uh, and really starting to, uh, to use this platform. So let's, uh, let's all set a goal for ourselves to have three, three each up and running by, uh, by next Friday. The yeah, only difference I... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, hopefully, obviously, not. Don't do it for like I don't know if it's I don't know. Don't do it for Ernst and Young or Gap if you feel like you're still a little worried. But if it's a smaller account and it's starting off as an S1 or a first meeting, I think it'd be a perfect way to get this get this going. So we will iron out some kinks. We will know what where the mistakes are and kind of fix them along the way. Just a little bit more before sales kick off, so we know exactly how to do this. So when we roll this globally, we'll know we would have fixed a few more things that you guys have discovered. When you're inviting uh, new customers, I, I think the discussion about, you know, the content that we just had a moment ago becomes important, um, you know, just from limiting it. When, it, when you're talking about deals and process, um, you know, I, I think there again, that there's a, there's a, a, you need to be cognizant of the information you're making available um, and making sure it's appropriate. Um, so if, if someone is already well past the need for some of this content, then I wouldn't you know, I wouldn't weigh them down with, with content they don't need. Um, just making sure it's, Chris, I think in answer to your question, I think making sure that the introduction is articulated, you know, with respect to where the deal is in, in, in the process and that there is a, you know, a, a deliberate decision being made in terms of what content we're making available for people and when. Um, now, when a room is opened at the beginning and content builds over time, now, obviously, you're just going to leave it there through the through the, the the full life of the deal, and that's where you'll ultimately wind up with this thing. But right now, you're talking about launching three rooms each to deals at different stages of the process. Um, I think there's just you know, there's some thought required in terms of how you introduce it and what content you make available. Yeah, and uh, one one more quick question on that. You mentioned that you know there's a lot of content in that default template that we're all using, and that right now the only way to do it is is to go through and manually hide each piece of content, which can take a bunch of time. Is there a way to hide a bulk of content all at the same time, or do you have to do it individually for each piece of content that's there by default? That's a, that's, to do it in the well, that's a good point, Tim. And I think, McCoon, I think what we should do is we should set the default setting to having minimal content visible. So we pick like a couple of pieces, like, you know, our vision and Gar uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant as like just as an example, have like a couple of pieces and then the team, you know, Tim will go in and select, you know, the three pieces of content that he wants to be immediately visible just to, I think, reduce that initial work up front. Yep, we can do that. We can turn a default off for giving you the option to make it different on. There you go. The, the only, that, so the, Tim, the, the only time it has to be done one by one by one is actually over there in the template. So it'll, it'll take someone some time to do within the template. But then when you launch your smart rooms from that template, the, the content that you've all strategically decided is to be hidden or visible will, will be set that way when you launch the smart room from that template. Anything else? All right, guys, uh, we're just waiting. If, the, if, the, team, if yeah. the team does have individual questions for you, is, is doing it through our, uh, is doing it through the smart room the best way to do that? And I think if one person asks a question, I think it'd be good to have that exposed to everybody. Um, so I guess same, different question, same, same answer maybe. 
Sure. So over in our in the smart room, in that training smart room that I've invited you all to, um, feel free to um, click down and on this smart room. You can see in the lower left there, room discussion. If you click room discussion in that smart room and just ask me a question, everyone on the team will see it and my reply. So we can do it that way. You can also message me one on one, one on one through the smart room. Um, you'll, you've got my email address um, and, uh, and and frankly. Um, you've, my cell phone number is, is in there in, in my contact information as well. So um, feel free, reach out. And if you'd like to schedule a 30 minute one-on-one, um, -on -one, we don't have to take the full 30 minutes, but if you'd like to just get together with me and, and talk about best practices and um, some past experience with other clients or what have you, um, I'm happy to get together with you all, you know, individually um, if you would like as well, whatever I can do to be helpful. Awesome. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, we're uh, we're excited to to start to use this. Thank you, sir. We're we're excited to be here. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks again, Makund. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Makund. Bye bye.